We previously mentioned that text is not really vector art in the sense that anchor points and directional lines used to form the letters are not editable. Photoshop has a feature similar to the Create Outlines option in Adobe Illustrator and InDesign that allows text to be converted from text into shapes for additional editing. It is called Convert to Shape and is located within the Type menu. Once the text has been changed to a shape, anchor points and directional lines can be edited to create custom text in a design. Converting text to vector art is a popular way to personalize text when designing a logo or to prevent type issues when outputting. For example, if you're sharing your file with someone who doesn't have the same fonts installed on their computer, converting the text to be a shape would be eliminated, would eliminate the, the need for him or her to install the font. And just a word of caution on that, you don't want to do that with large bodies of text. That's for, you know, you have one or two words in your design and you want to make sure that whoever gets the file um, doesn't need to install a font. If you were, you know, writing a novel, that would be a horrible idea because you couldn't fix typos or things like that. Using the Convert to Shape option in Photoshop allows users to personalize text when using anchor points and directional lines. In this example, we converted the text to a shape. Anchor points and directional lines appeared, and we were able to modify them by repositioning anchor points and changing curves using directional lines. Once the path is deselected, mm -hmm. no one knows the text isn't really text. It just appears as a funky, custom variation of the font. It can be our little secret that the text is actually a series of shapes. Converting text to be a shape should only be done once you have 100% decided on the typeface and wording because once the text has been converted to a shape, it can no longer be edited. There's no fixing typos or changing of typefaces. Shapes can be filled with a solid color, a gradient, or a pattern via the fill flyout menu on the options bar. The shape must be selected to perform these edits. You can select it with the path selection tool or the direct selection tool via the tools panel. As you can see in the examples below, many fun colors, patterns, and textures can be created. These are all considered non-destructive edits because the shapes remain fully editable in the future. So if you don't mind, Jessica, demoing. One more time. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we're going to take text and we're going to pretend like we're making some sort of logo. And I'm going to call it my fun logo. And I'm going to make paragraph text, which makes you think back to a previous lecture. Uh, and to make paragraph text, I'm going to click and drag to make a text box, which constrains the text to fit in that box. And we'll call it my fun logo. It's too big to fit all in one line. And so I'm going to make the text smaller, but not that small. Let's try 125 or 100. There we go. And then I think it's really hard to read this on screen right now, so I'm going to change it to just a big blocky font that you'll be able to, to see better. And now that it's created, I can edit it, right? I can change the color, I can change what it says, I can change the typeface. But if I wanted to personalize it and make it look like I made this logo instead of just typing words on a screen, um, I would have to convert it to be a shape. And the steps to create it to be a shape are to select the layer that you want to convert to a shape, on the type menu, about halfway down, there is a convert to shape option. We'll zoom in here a little bit. And when you do that, watch what happens to your text. It, whoops, let's make sure that we select it with our path selection tool. It ends up having anchor points, and if I click on an anchor point, directional lines controlling curves that can now be modified. And so in the example on the slide, on the slideshow, I just kind of did funky things to it um, by grabbing maybe one or two anchor points at a time. Let's zoom in a little bit so I can see. Now this typeface has curved edges and so there's two anchor points at every intersection. And so I'm going to drag a selection around the top corner of the M here and with my keyboard I could modify the text. Oops, make sure that you deselect. Oh, uh, do as I say and not as I do. So I have the path selection tool selected. You need to have the direct selection tool selected to modify anchor points. And so if I want to modify just the four anchor points in the top right hand corner of the M, make sure you grab that white mouse first and now I can modify them. And so I could use the up arrows. I could make maybe part of the letters taller. You can do it to the Y as well. And I'm just using my keyboard to do this. You could even make part of the M come down further. You can select one anchor point and do this. I think it's just easier. You can even select the whole left-hand side of the F and bring it up and out to make it look custom. Maybe the right-hand side of the F here, we bring down and over. And you can customize or you can slightly tweak 
what you're doing for your logo. And when you just make it slightly different, it becomes more personalized and it looks like you created something as opposed to you just saying, I really like that typeface and I'm going to use it in my project. The last thing I want to show you is how to change the color of shapes. And so this applies to text that's been converted to shapes and also custom shapes and basic shapes like we learned earlier in the lecture. In order for it to work, you must select the layer and then select the path selection tool so that your selection is active and highlighted. Um, then you can come up to your options bar at the top of the screen and you can select the fill flyout or drop down menu and you can choose a color and so you'll see the tops of my letters are going to change color and now they're all in the same layer and they're all part of the same grouping and so they're all going to change if you wanted to modify the layers independently you would have to separate them onto their own shape layers uh, the first option here is the first and the second option are really for solid colors. The first one is to get rid of color, but if you select a color at the bottom, it will become a color. The second one will make your text a color. Um, by default, it will be black, but I just selected orange, so now it's orange. The third is a gradient, and so you can create your own custom gradient if you want to, or you can always use the presets in Photoshop here. So we'll just grab this guy. If we zoom out, you'll see that by default, it's a linear gradient, um, but you have the option to make it radial if you want to. I'm kind of partial to the radial ones. I always use those in my example. I like to make the scale bigger so that it kind of fades and doesn't look as harsh or, or the transition between the colors doesn't look as harsh. And the last option is to add a pattern. And so we've learned about patterns when we do layer effects. Um, now these are images, so they're raster-based images being placed inside our vector art. And that's okay, um, but just keep that in mind. Um, so you can add different patterns inside your text if you want to. You can even go another step. You know, you don't have to just add color. We have learned that you can modify your layers anyway, or your shape layers anyway, you can modify other layers. And so if you wanted to, you could add a, an outer glow. Let's make it a color so you can see it. Make, there we go. You can add an outer glow to your text. You can um, do a pattern overlay on top of yours and if you do some sort of overlay it will blend the two patterns together. You can modify in any way that you would modify your regular layers. Okay, Did I cover everything I was supposed to demo? Yes you did. Very okay. cool. Then we will wrap up this lecture with the very next video.